It was Thursday, 4 a.m. My recurring dream about long dark tunnels was interrupted by the squawking noises of his phone. It was Alphonse, my contact in England. He needed my specialty like I needed a week of holidays. I didn't have time to explain why I was heading to England to the landlady, but I'm sure by now she was savvy to the cockeyed complications of my work. It turned out that Alphonse was privy to some information concerning the apparent disappearance of a famous girl band, and he needed my help to find them. Friday, 2 a.m. After 20 hours sitting uncomfortably between two large cellulite stuffed lumps, I needed to stretch like an inflatable doll needs air. I was the lucky receptacle of several bottles of cheap airline scotch, which I imbibed with an amount of class known only to Norse gods. I was glad they had the scotch. It's the only thing these airlines do right, except maybe their chauvinist hiring policies. England was wet. I would have slipped straight in had there not been a job in need of an eye as well trained as mine. I crossed the threshold into the mansion. It felt so good I slipped out and entered again. I repeated myself like an itchy scratch on a record that hadn't been itched in years before allowing myself to come inside. Relieved after my grand entrance, I was drawn to the boudoirs of the famous five girls who were about as absent as a cheap hooker the morning after. Like a moth to the light, I found myself at the underwear drawers. What I found within set my head into a frenzy of fantasy to keep me in business for weeks. A stark comparison to the starched white hessian bags that my second wife Mona insisted upon wearing. I held the flimsy fabric in my hand for a moment, savouring its feel before I realised I was not as alone as I had previously thought. This was confirmed to me by the presence of another person looking directly at me. A finely tuned machine of muscular manhood stood before, clutching what I can only assume was his rod, like a mountain climber dangling over the edge of an abyss. I am here to clean the pool. Who are you? I explained to him as best I could the story of how Alphonse called in my special skills in solving the disappearance of the finger-licking, fantastically luscious spy. I was here when the girls disappeared. Yes, I see nothing, but I did find this by the pool. He handed me a claw, small and made of clay like an early Roman medallion. I turned it in my hands, feeling its texture, as my head tumbled with thoughts of a smooth-skinned, naked maiden below my fingertips. I recognized the maker's mark etched into the bottom immediately, like a barely pubescent boy stumbling through his first screw. Except in this case, I was right on the money shot. I had to get back to the lost continent of Moon, and fast. Friday, 4 p.m. After a mad rush to make the last train to Trans Central, I had exhausted myself to the point of flaccidity, like a drunk night spent at the old folks' home. I entered into the lair ready for action, but the bitch didn't put out. I was going to have to fight for it. 